Good morning, monkeys. Welcome to another episode of RCT Classic for iPad here at Coaster Monkey Studios. Ah, we're going to pick up right where we left off. Hope you guys enjoyed yesterday's video, uh, the Ghost Town 2, the two videos I put out, the Ghost Town videos. Uh, I wanted to make sure, you know, it was a nice cohesive story and I hope you guys picked up on that. Uh, definitely enjoyed making it and here we are doing the next part. So on the opposite side of our lake here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a monorail station, but I was thinking very old school ragtime type um, train station, right? Because we don't have a train for this park. So I looked up a couple and I actually got this idea off of Disney, Disneyland in California. And the intention here was to create, you know, a very grand stone station. Uh, and when I say stone, think, you know, not brickwork, but, you know, stones layered on top of each other with mortar and whatnot. Uh, with a few towers, I want it to be grand. I want it to be big. And when you're walking from your mine area into the Wild West area, you're going to see... You know, the clear definition between the two as you walk through this station. It's a really great starting and stopping point for our guests as well, because as they get on and off the monorail, they can go in either direction towards our GCI or towards our mine train. And as you see here, what I did was I worked from the bottom up. And again, I worked on one facade and then I did the secondary facade on the opposite side. This way we don't get lost in the sauce with our lack of depth perception. But look how awesome that looks, I love that. All right now at this point here, I was thinking to myself, okay, how am I gonna make this look, or continue to look so grand, right? So what I did was I built out two towers that wrap around the walkways and then layered it in with some floral uh, pads so this way we've got an again a nice clear cohesive look and again you, as you can see getting lost in the sauce here with the depth perception right as I'm building this up I'm like wait a minute hold on how far out does the roof go right so it's very easy to get lost in there so I made sure I, I was on top of that and, and, and kind of moved it around a little bit But I like what I did here. I mean, it just feels like a very grand train station, you know, something you would see uh, in our generation now that has been refurbished and rebuilt or, or cleaned up. You know, I think, you know, when I did my Around the Royals in 31 Days tour, I, I rode on quite a, in quite a few train stations. Now I think of the one in Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia, that Amtrak station was amazing. I think of the one in Orlando, uh, which had a very grand feel to it from the exterior. You know, uh, I think very old school train, right? I rode through some of the greatest train stations on that tour as well. Throughout the entire country, you know, going from here down to North Carolina. North Carolina had a great one. And then in Atlanta. And then I got on a crazy train. There was actually a great train station in Tulsa. Not Tulsa, I'm sorry, uh, in Arizona. Where was I in Arizona? I forget which city I was in. Uh, but when I tell you this train station was so fantastic, it, I mean, it just it had that very old school vibe or industrialized vibe that has been modernized. You know, you walk outside a train station, you see all these modern buildings around you, very, you know, turn of the century buildings like warehouses that have been turned into lofts and, and eateries and you know and that was the entire uh, idea I went after with this building you know and if you look at it it has that very grand feel to it. Now this is the great kind great kind of station this is a great kind of station that you would see at an entryway or in the beginning of a of a park walking out of the, uh, um, an entryway plaza or walking through an entryway plaza, maybe, you know, as you're getting out of your car and walking through the uh, parking lot, 
Why am I drawing a blank on so many words today? I'm a little distracted, don't mind me. But yes, as you're getting into your car, and this is what you know, what you see, this is what you would go after, right? You get on that train at this type of a station. So I wanted to have that grand feel, you know, because this is the type of stations that they would have had at the turn of the century. All right, so moving on now to the other side of the lake, what I wanted to do is I wanted to have a clear definition between the Old West area and the lakefront. So I decided to create concession stands all the way around. As you see, I did one of our underground pathways there as well to minimize any laggers that we may have. But what I've done here is I, I just put a bunch of concession stands and I went super generic. The whole idea is to go very vintage, old time lake house. And uh, the intention here was to keep it very clean, very simple buildings, because that's what you're going to see at uh, an old time uh, fair. You think boardwalk-esque type feel. And that's what I was going after for these particular buildings. Kept it super clean and um, generic, because that's what I wanted. With that very, you know, generic theme park, or uh, not theme park, generic amusement park feel. Think Paradise Pier, or now known as Pixar Pier in California, where it went for that very turn of the century vintage feel. Think about old school Luna Park or Coney Island. Think about Indiana Beach in Oklahoma. Um, there are just so many different uh, examples that I could give you for that old time feel. And, and that's what we went after here. Now, what I like about these buildings is, again, they look like simple facade fronts, things that you would see in an amusement park or in a traveling carnival, you know, easy to put up and take down super quick, right? And I love the variations in color. I think very pop color, bubble gum. Um, and that's, again, what you would see in an amusement park. So I was running into a little bit of a conundrum here. I didn't know how tall I wanted the building to go. I wanted there to be variation in them too. I didn't want them all to seem the same. So I created this type of a, a roof here. And we actually wound up using this building as a throughput for our laggers. So we get a little bit of a lagging that happens there. Trying to get over to the mine train side, which is totally fine, again. Love the canary yellow next to the teal blue as well. Super fun. All right, so at this point, I'm looking at the lakefront, I'm thinking, okay, well, how can I make this feel like an old school boardwalk lakefront? So what I did was is I created a quote unquote boathouse eatery Put a couple of concession stands in here, threw a pier on the outside, a deck on the outside where people could sit out and eat, and then off of that deck, as you'll see shortly, I create a canoe ride. And we've been talking about doing a canoe ride now for quite a bit through this part of the lake here. Um, but I really like the direction we went. And what I did was I created a, a, a base here with the flooring. Uh, this is actually just a base block, as you can see. Uh, so I created a flooring with this base block all the way around. You kind of set what that footprint will look like. And once I set the footprint, I built the building on top of that foundation. Now, for those of you that are not sure, or if you can see what I did here, so it's two base blocks for every increase in the walkway, all right? So if you wanted to create a, a, a foundation for a building first, instead of having your building's open foundation being on the grass or on the ground, you wanna go up two 
units of base block for every increase you go in height in the walkway. Now we did here is we just did our open arches all the way around. And uh, again, I wanted to have a very open air feel and that very vintage vibe, you know? So I, what I did was I looked up Luna Park. Luna Park back in the early 1900s in Coney Island, Brooklyn, had quite a few buildings of this same type of aesthetic. Uh, very grand, think very palatial is probably the best word I could use. If you look at the old Turkish baths, bath buildings that used to be in Luna Park, you know, this is exactly how they looked. They had these grand spires that came up with uh, uh, curved and rounded rounded ceilings and uh, a lot of glass ceilings as well to let the sun through and go into like the open air areas and food, not food areas, the pool areas in the Turkish bath. So I kind of went with the same idea here as I wrapped it around and I liked this taupe brown or this uh, sandy brown along with the teal and then just threw in the white rounded roof as well. Uh, and then I just threw up our four spires at the top, which I thought were pretty cool. And it gives a very, again, vintage, old school, early 1900s amusement park feel. And what I did was I thought this was pretty cool since I forgot to throw in the glass work. I took this um, trellis work here and I utilized it as a glass ceiling. It's framing for a glass ceiling. I thought it worked pretty well. All right, so as we build out the boat ride here, and this is something I would suggest for most of you, you know, again, whenever you just put in the foundation or the station for the boat ride, the boats tend to go off in their own direction. They don't come back and it, it creates issues with notifications consistently popping up. So what I do is I create a track for that boat ride or that water ride and then I color it the same color as the water so you really can't see it. And then there is a ride out in Tokyo Disneyland. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. It's a boat ride and it's, it's a tracked ride. Uh, but what it does is it moves you around the water on this, this flotation device or this floating vehicle and you have these near misses with other boats, you have these near misses with water, um, fountains that shoot out of the water. It's, it's a pretty cool ride. I really like the whole idea of it. And that's what we went for here. We went with that same type of idea, right? We wanted to go in and out of that, that uh, course. All right, so as we frame out our walkways now for the inside of the lake, right? So the, the side of the walkway framing the lake. What I decided to do here as I was looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, well, how do I take this the edge of this lake and create, you know, a really fun look or something that's clean. So I went ham a little bit, I'm not gonna lie, with the shrubbery and the bushes around the exterior of the lake, around that border, because I really wanted it to cover up. I wanted it to have a very natural feel. I thought it, very, it looked very artificial. So I went around and I took our three bushiest bushes and followed the trim all the way around the lake here. And I started to notice again, you know, I get stuck in one thing, right? So there's so much repetition. So I wind up taking uh, some of these and deleting them and putting in other bushes. But I took our three bushiest of the bushes and I wrapped it around the lake here. And I utilized one specific tree, and you'll see in a little bit, in sporadic areas around the lake. And just thinking about you know, some of the lakes that I visit, I was out in Atlanta, Georgia at Piedmont Park and the way their lake is set up, it, it's very similar. It's very natural around the edge. And then, you know, there's quite a few trees around. I didn't want to go too ham on the trees because I was thinking to myself, okay, if I go too ham on the trees, then to be blocking the, the view of the lake, then what's the point, right? So I come back here and I throw in, and you see the variation now in the bushes. It looks so repetitive, it's just silliness. Started deleting some of those out, throwing in some, some uh, variation. I this is when I said, okay, this looks way too repetitive, right? So I come back in and I start putting in some trees. And this is the tree that I chose, the uh, Aleppo. 
pine tree. Uh, I find that so funny. It's such a gorgeous tree. Uh, and again, just sporadically around, very clean uh, look to the entire thing, all the way around the lake. Throw in some variation of shrubbery here. Now this is where I take in a third uh, different shrub, and I love it now with the variation in color, and I think I'm gonna do this going forward in all of my parks when I'm making them. Look at that. And now we take the bulrushes, uh, otherwise known as water reeds, or really whatever you want to call them. But we take them and we, we put them in a more open space. And you think about like what it looks like when you're at an actual natural water feature. This is kind of what it feels like and looks like. And we wanted to go with it as natural as possible, right? How realistic can we be? Now, if you notice, I've had a bit of a dip in my park rating up in the top left there. I wind up coming back in a minute and fixing that uh, off camera where I had missed a couple of spots in my walkway that uh, people were, you know, purging on. But yeah, so moving forward. Now, at this point here, I decided to throw in on the other side dueling Ferris wheels. And I love the idea of dueling Ferris wheels. I always have, you know, it's such a fun look in a park, uh, one going forward, one going backward. I face them in opposite directions, so depending on what side you wanna face, when you're riding the ride, you can uh, you can face it there. And then I, I take out the center walkway there. I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, how do we make this center walkway feel, again, like a pier, right? Because we want it to feel like, you know, that boardwalk pier-esque feel. So I threw that there and then I put up concession stands here in the center, souvenir stands, but I kept them without a building. I wanted it to feel very campy, very cheesy, very, you know, I just threw this up type, you know, amusement park feel or, or traveling carnival feel. That was the intention I was going after here. And I wanted it to feel that way. And I think I, I succeeded very well. I hope you guys do too. <laughs> Now, even though that is an exit there for the rides, I didn't want to keep it open for, for through traffic, even though I've got those souvenir stands in there. And the reason for that is you're going to end up with laggers here on the pier. Uh, you get a couple with the exit for the ride, so it's not too tragic, but anything more than that winds up bringing down your park rating. And how awesome does that look though? Look at that, it's a really nice clean feel all the way around. Now again with the whole idea of you know each area being closed off and, and, and all engulfing, right? So we create this, you know, nice greenery around here, very park feeling. And you're going to see what I do in a little bit. I think I might actually do it here. I don't remember 100%. But there's you know, some floating pieces as well. Look at that. Uh, but yeah, so look at that. From the close up view, that guest view, look at how great that looks, right? Now we're going to throw up our signs for all of our concession stands through our lakefront. I definitely don't think I have any benches or lamppost or garbage pail. So I'm going to have to come back and do that here. And maybe I'll do that today. I'll go through and I'll make sure all of my pathways are 100% off camera, obviously, because I don't want you guys to sit through that and, you know, hang yourselves. Because <laughs> listening to me talk as it is, is completely boring. I'm sure most of you probably mute me. <laughs> I would mute me. I say I'm a lot. I say I'm a lot and I, uh, gasp for air when I'm talking too much. Now here I take away the orange. I feel like the orange was a little bit too much. I wanted it to just be very simple and calm. All of the souvenir stands here are all teal uh, in the lakefront again so we can gauge where our, our customers and guests are shopping within the park. There's a few teal balloons, not many. 
um, yet, and, and hopefully that does change. But I feel like the only way to get a, a massive influx of those teal balloons and, and a lot of happy, quote unquote, guests is by having uh, is by having you know a roller coaster here or something that will create high levels of excitement and, and increased happiness for our guests' uh, statistics. All right, and. At this point here, I'm like, you know what? We need a really good entryway coming into and out of the lakefront going into our castle themed area. So I figured why not create an old school lakefront um, pair of, of towers that you would walk through and then we could mimic that on the opposite side with castle towers. I thought that was such a great idea, right? Um, so that's what I'm doing here. Uh, and again, as you walk right through from the castle area, the first thing you see are these two grand Ferris wheels and behind those Ferris wheels, the open lake front with the opposite side having a boathouse where you would have lunch. I mean, so much fun. It was so easy to do this part here too. And again, you, you really don't see the same thing on either side, right? And the intention is to create an all-engulfing environment for our guest. And this is the type of thing you would see in a real theme park. You know, different walkways and entryways from one area to the next to create that, that all-engulfing experience. Now I end up with a lagging issue over here. I wind up again, like I said, close off that pier. I wind up putting a building next to the entryway there on the left-hand side so I can have an underground walkway from the boathouse over here. So that's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoy. Catch you next time. Uh, Coaster Monkey Studios, thank you. and.